On the streets of Addis Ababa, the often thin line between luck and misfortune is on daily display. Tulan Hinu was once a healthy 23-year-old shepherd. Overnight, polio stole his legs. The culprit was a microscopic virus, one of three types of virus which, since the dawn of civilization, have entered the bodies of just about every person on Earth. In the developing world, it's a disease spread by poor sanitation, via human fecal contamination in water, soil, or, most commonly, unclean hands. In practically every case, wild virus triggers little more than an upset stomach, perhaps a fever. But for an unlucky few, roughly one in 200, the virus escapes the digestive system and invades the nervous system. Once there, it attacks muscle neurons and shuts down reproduction of new cells. Um, you could compare it to leprosy or to gangrene, where that whole um, part of the person's body actually doesn't, um, doesn't revive from it, and it kills off all those cells and all the nerve endings in those areas, so that it just dies off. Linda Vinzel knows polio. Dr. Venzel is a polio eradication expert for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. She and Ezra are welcomed into a village near Diradawa, not far from Ethiopia's most recent polio outbreak. Linda. 99.5% of those exposed to wild virus do not end up paralyzed and are rewarded with lifelong immunity to the disease. Unfortunately, their fecal wastes, for a while anyway, remain contagious. And so they pass it on, and they're like silent um, transmitters of the virus to other people. So the majority of people won't get disease, but they will be able to have the virus uh, going into their system. It's a vicious cycle for a disease with no known cure, and it might seem quite hopeless, except that there is a proven weapon. A simple, straightforward way for everyone on Earth to protect themselves without passing on polio to others. Every child needs to be vaccinated. Vaccinated. Every child. What it does is it causes the immune system to react almost like it had the wild virus. And because it's safe and because it's not the wild virus, then their immune system will remember that virus. And if they're ever exposed to the real thing, they're protected because it's like their, their bodies are primed to actually react and protect that virus from, from circulating in their bodies. In the developed world, the vaccination call to arms has been a roaring success. Since the mid-1950s, nearly every child in wealthier nations has been given the gift of inoculation, and almost no one in those countries now comes down with polio. There's more good news. Animals can't get polio. Unlike so many other diseases, the virus isn't transmitted between animals and humans, which means, in theory, polio can be wiped off the face of the earth. In countless villages throughout Africa, local healthcare workers must go door to door, calling on friends and neighbors. How many kids younger than five live here? Have they received all their polio drops and boosters? Who's got the vaccine? Four children live here, including a three-year-old boy and a seven-month-old baby named Magartu. Magartu's mother, Dasare, welcomes the vaccinations, was eager to invite the team of yellow-vested Rotarians and local volunteers into her courtyard for polio drops and a spot of ink on her child's fingernail to show she'd been vaccinated. Ha, <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but door-to-door -door campaigns can be daunting. In this part of Ethiopia, streets such as they are have no names and houses have no numbers. Uh, this is not like map in Phoenix, Arizona, where every street's laid out north, south, east, west. You, here you've got alleys and streets and trails and, and villages and huts uh, here and huts there. Another challenge, polio vaccine can be fragile. Without proper protection, it will quickly spoil in the equatorial heat. The part is that little dot on the vaccine bottle. This will this will provide vaccine for 20 children. That little dot is white as long as this vaccine is kept cold. It was discovered and in, invented by PATH in Seattle, Program for Alternative Technology and Health. And if this vaccine gets warm, that dot turns black. And the vaccine's no good, and we know that. So it's kept in here with... And, in fact, concern about whether vaccinations are being properly administered is one of the main reasons why Dr. Venzel has joined Ezra on this journey. Millions have been spent on the eradication effort, and more is still needed. Okay. I don't understand, Ezra. They don't have enough vaccine now here in... Not enough vaccine. Everyone, including the Gates Foundation and Rotary International, is determined to see that those millions are not wasted by incomplete or inefficient vaccination campaigns. So kids that were missing, but she found them and she gave them vaccination. So for the whole day, they, they didn't miss one child? That's kind of... All the children are vaccinated. They found all of them. The bottom line for nearly everyone is the fervent desire to wipe out polio so that money can be spent instead on a host of other urgent needs. Frankly, though, if there are so many other needs, then why continue trying? Why not declare victory, accept that polio remains in part of the world, and just go home? I wish it was that easy. We've invested so much in coming so close to reaching polio eradication that to give up now would actually not be cost effective. If one virus comes back and affects Ethiopia, uh, that virus will jump to the neighboring countries all that effort and all those resources would be wasted and we go back to having 200 to 300,000 cases of polio a year and I just don't think that's acceptable or anybody would want to, to accept that as, as where we stopped with this program. The failure not to do it is going to cost more, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go back to the entire world again so we can't stop. Yes, who's a book, guys?